Hello chess fans, we're back with another CM training video against Suvilov Mar or Marat and they're going to try to play a perk defense or Philidor. So let's say, do we see e5 or do we see g6? Okay, we see knight d7, which I don't think is the greatest move because it allows f4, but it also allows this other sideline, which might be slightly underrated, which I think is g4. And g4 is using the fact that the bishop now blocks here. And I think it's very underrated. Okay, so my opponent goes h6. Now the idea is to go h3. And after e5, we're going to go knight e2. And we pretty much can't have this line in any other variation because the bishop usually covers g4. And after h3, our opponent usually doesn't play h6. Okay, so we see c6. Let's go for bishop e2. Now the idea is to go castles and break with f4. And white is usually very much attacking black in this type of position. Okay. So now let's go for this one. Let's castle. Now our opponent, I think, was supposed to play g5 there, surprisingly enough. But our opponent doesn't play that. So now let's go for f4. We're being very aggressive because I think that the position calls for it. And we will see. Okay, our opponent wants to take there. Now, if we were to take with the queen, I think our opponent has d5 with the threat of bishop c5, so I think we have to take with our knight here, unfortunately. We would love to take with the queen because there's no knight c6, but if d5, bishop c5 is a tactic I've fallen for too many times to count. Okay, so now if d5 ever happens, we're going to play e5, and our knight is looking to have a nice square on f5, which is why I was probably going to think about maneuvering the knight this way, but our opponent captured here, which I think is favorable to us because our pieces are a lot better. So now I expect knight c5. I think that's the only move that makes any sense, to be honest. And, oh, okay, so queen b3, or queen b6, sorry. Uh, I think I might just unpin with going king h1. Could also go bishop b3 and sack the b2 pawn, but I'm not sure how much compensation I have, so I'm just going to go king h1 and avoid any nasty complications. And the bishop doesn't usually move that often doesn't need to move okay knight there now immediately i think of knight uh the pawn here takes takes if knight e7 then we can go for this and pretty much just explode the position after takes here and other considerations we could go a3 looking for b4 to provoke a5 which i'm not sure if a5 is a move that i don't want to provoke i think it's a fine move for black so i'm not i don't think i'm going to go for that now next I'm thinking of knight e2, but that would hang this pawn. So then I'm thinking of rook b1 with b5 ideas. Now I think the safest course of action here is to go a3, which threatens b4, which my opponent should pretty much not allow because then all my pieces are great. And my opponent would play a5. Hmm. My opponent would play a5, but I'm not sure how bad a5 is as a move. I could then go rook b1. I could go rook b1 right now to threaten b4 and also allow my bishop to develop yeah i'm gonna go for rook b1 the idea is to play b4 and the also other idea is to go bishop b3 because now my pawn is defended i could have gone a3 but after a5 i don't really see what i'm doing okay so my opponent doesn't have any clear breaks and then i think it's bad for them to castle on the queen side or sorry, the king side, because, okay, I have all these pawns nicely marched up. If h5, I have g5, and if bishop d7, they try to castle this way, and now I have b4 ideas expanding on both sides of the board. So here, I think I'm winning on both sides of the board, which should mean my position is much better. But okay, my opponent goes a5. So now we can finally play for bishop e3, now that our pawn is defended. And next, we can look forward to something like queen f3, and ideas like e5. e5 here now, I think, is very potent. Uh... Okay, our opponent goes for g5, which is a very tricky move. Now, I'm thinking we can go e5, because after takes, takes, I think that's just game over. Because if g5, if I take, 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 then our opponent has this take, but now I think e5 is just winning the game on the spot. I don't see how black is defending. For example, if they take here, we can take here with an attack on the bishop, and they shouldn't be able to defend that position. And we don't want their rook to get active. I think they should have played g5 earlier, and instead of the knight coming to c5, sometimes the knight comes to here and looks to maneuver in here while the bishop trades off for the pawn on f5, and then they castle queenside because their queen was on c7. For example, if we go back a few seconds, 
instead of bishop e7 if they went g5 bishop g7 up here the bishop comes to d7 the castle queen side i think they're not doing too badly okay so they take back let's take back now the f file is open i really like my position here and if they go here i think i can go e6 because if they capture i can take it back and if they capture with the knight i can take it back because if they take here i have the move knight c7 with the fork so i don't I don't know really where they're going to go. They might go here, but that just loses a piece. Sorry. Uh, they could go here, but after after here, maybe takes, takes, takes with the bishop. And okay, our king is a little bit weak, but we are up a pawn and their king is almost just certainly just as weak. And if bishop e6, we even have to take, we can take here and, and they seemingly are losing the game. Or we could just go back even. We could take here. Okay, so knight d5 is played. Now I could go queen f3 maybe, threatening to take this one. But after takes, I don't think I have much. So I'm just going to take this one very quickly because I don't want to get low on time. And the air opponent would have bishop e6 even. So now I'm going to take this one. So now we're up a pawn. So what we got to think about doing now is converting. Bishop there. Now I'm thinking the best course of action is to go here, which threatens the bishop. And also threatens to take, take, and then put pressure on this somehow. Now, if bishop f5 takes here, takes here, I feel we're doing well after like rook d8, bishop c4, or something like that. So, or even or even knight g7. Yeah, knight g7 would even be a threat. So, yeah, let's go knight f5. That defends this. Because it takes, takes here. For example, if takes, takes uh, rook d8, we actually have knight g7 and then queen f7 mate. So our opponent can't do that. So I really like the move knight f5. I've really liked how I've played so far. I think I've really taken advantage of my opponent's uh, sort of opening inaccuracy. I think it's a bad way to get the Philidor. And notice my opponent can't castle either way because I would have take here. And that would be a free piece. So my opponent's definitely thinking about what to do here. Knight f5 is, a, I think, a really good move, to be honest. I don't, I don't see what else would have been better. Because now I open the knight, I open the bishop, the rooks are nice. I think all of my pieces are harmoniously working here. And the only thing I have to be concerned about even a little bit probably is my king. And if black does nothing here, like if black plays like rook f8, uh, we can even threaten knight g7. And if they move to the e-file, then they get this double check. So really, it's really hard for black to find a move here. Um, Yeah, I'm not really sure what black should do here. Maybe h5. No. Okay, so our opponent goes there, which is, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So now I think I have to go rook here. So I threaten this. Our opponent might castle queen side. Maybe that's their idea. Castle queen side, I think I'm going to go for castle's king side, really. I did not expect castle's king side. Okay, let's go for queen f3 to attack the pawn again. And I don't think they have knight f6, knight e6. They might, if queen f3, they might have queen g6. Might be their idea. But then I can go for takes, takes, and then rook f6. And then their queen is kind of just trapped. Yeah, I'll take the knight. Okay, so let's go queen f3. Knight e6 loses the queen. So they have to go queen g6. And then I can take, take, and play rook f6. And they still have to keep defense of this. And after rook here, there's no defense of that anymore so this should be doing very well actually on queen g6 maybe it's better to go takes takes and rook f1 because then i'd be threatening bishop f7 with the fork yeah i think that makes a lot of sense so we're up a pawn and we're attacking we have the two bishops this position is marvelous and yeah i'm not really sure what black should do here we're threatening to go here i think they should have castled queen side on the last move giving up f7 but obviously our opponent didn't think that giving up f7 was a good idea it it could be said that castle and queen side doesn't look natural here because you are expanded and the rook rook b1 would make a lot more sense then okay so our opponent goes for rook d8 okay so i think we can just capture here i don't see really a problem with that if they capture here i can take the rook first and then take this and if they take here, obviously, that's no good because I think they should be probably losing the game. Also, I could go rook f1. Possibilities. 
I could go check here, but I don't think that's good. So I'm going to go rook here. And every trade of pieces we have from this position is pretty good for me. So, yeah, I think this is the right move. They probably have to go king h8. And then I can go for rook f1 and turn to uh, basically get a very good position. If they take here, I can go like queen e4 maybe. Yeah, let's take here. If captures here, we can take this one first with check. Our opponent played that pretty fast. And then take this with check. Now we're up the exchange. And our opponent offers the trade of queens, which I think we should happily take. But our, I think we should take it on our own terms. So I'm going to go rook d1 because they are pinned. And yeah, I really like my position. It's been very good for a while now. And our opponent resigns. Wow. Okay, so a very pretty much a good game. 24 move win against the 2500, I think. That should be... That's excellent. I think the reason why they lost is because of this pretty much opening novelty. Okay, yeah. So I pretty much just played a perfect game. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And yeah. So the reason why e5 is not played is because after takes, 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 this position is considered to be very bad for black because white, or this position isn't considered to be that bad for black, but it's considered to be really unpleasant because after bishop c4 attacking this pawn, the best move here is to go bishop e6 and accept this. And yes, it's probably equal and the white white black can probably hold as an engine but it's very difficult for black to hold as a human and yeah instead of this what if you want to win you have to go king e8 and then here white is just severely up on development after knight f3 we have all these pieces developed while you only have this knight developed so it's clear to see that okay only white can really be better for example after bishop d6 here we can go bishop g5 and then look for takes takes knight d5 ideas there's just so many reasons why white is better here so instead people start going knight bd d7 now this gives up two things. The first things it gives up is f4. You allow the move f4 because in the other position, after e5, we can't go f4 because then after takes takes, they have knight here. And so we'd have to go knight f3 to defend the pawn. Knight bd7, we could also go knight f3 and transpose, but we should punish them. And after f4, this position is unclear after e5. I feel like black does have the stronghold on the center. And I feel that black can pretty much be doing well here. But instead of that, we should go for g4, which I think is highly venomous, extremely underrated. If e5 is losing on the spot to g5 because they have no better option than to go back. And black, white is just completely winning here because black is down on development. So they shouldn't do that. So what they have to go is go h6. And here, all we need to do, take it slow. Here, I played the main move. I mean, I think the best move here is to go bishop e3. And you can also look forward to things like this. But I played h3. Because I, I didn't want to attack my opponent. I just wanted to keep solid and just have more space on both sides of the board. My opponent goes e5. I go knight g2. I wanted to take with the queen here. Because when the knight can't come to c6, you should generally take with the queen. But we'll see later that was impossible. So my opponent went c6. Preparing d5 in some positions. I played bishop g2, the main move. Apparently, the best move here is supposed to be a4. But I don't think b5 is so relevant to the position right now. And here, the best move is b5. And I think... I was going to play probably a3, or I think more natural for me is to go knight g3 to defend this and bring the other knight to f2 to prepare f4. Castle. As we saw, they got no uh, counterplay on the queen side in a game, so obviously that can't be good. So castles, bishop e7. Here I played f4, so f4 is the best move. That's uh, pretty good, I guess. My opponent went here, and yeah, I think I was right. Here, is g5 a good move? g5, according to the engine, is the best move. Okay, so that's pretty nice after I played it. The engine doesn't even see it in this position. Yeah, g5. Okay, yeah, g5 ran to the top move. That's that's basically the idea that black has to go for here and then they have to look for a kingside attack with h5. I've gone crushed many a times with this opening as uh, white when my opponent went for this g5 move and attacked me while my bishop was on c4 and I didn't know what to do. Okay, but I went for f4, so you try to get the break in. Now my opponent took here and I took here. If queen takes after d5, I thought this position was really bad for me. And the reason why this is bad is because I'm kind of a little bit overcommitted. So I want the center to be as close as possible. And here there's no way to open it. So my opponent goes for queen b6, which doesn't make any sense pretty much. Castle here is a hard move to play because I think knight f5 attacking this is just brutal. Knight c5, knight xc7. And yeah, this having I have the two bishops. I have everything in the position. Queen d4. Yeah, I, I take white here any day. So queen b6, king h1 is the best, knight c5. 
Rook B1. Is that the best move? Okay, it's a. Okay, it's not. It's not even. It's a third best move. Okay, the best move apparently here is to go A4 to go A5, which makes perfect sense to me. But after A5, then you go E5. Okay, why the pawn needs to be here beyond me, but yeah, and then this would have been winning. Yeah, okay, that makes that makes perfect sense. But Rook B1 I think is a very classy move. A5, Bishop E3 developing. I wanted to get all my pieces developed before I break. Here my opponent went for G5. They lashed out. They should really castle here. And after G5, I think I'm completely winning. And the engine agrees with me. It's plus three. After E5, it's plus six. Takes, takes. Uh, Knight D5, yeah. Okay, apparently the engine says Bishop takes D5, takes, takes. Queen G6. Ah, uh, yeah, I do have this. And then I win the piece. Okay, yeah, I missed that. I went for Knight takes C5 and... Knight f5. Yeah, knight f5 is a very brilliant move because then we are attacking the bishop. We're threatening all these threats. For example, rook f8, knight g7 was what I calculated. And the other move I calculated, what was that? Oh, yeah, rook d8. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, takes, takes. Then rook d8, we have knight g7, king f8, queen f7 mate, which was another nice calculation to make. So bishop f5, and yeah, this is just game over pretty much. And my opponent resigned. So yeah, here's the evaluation of the game here. Pretty much just a straight upward game. And very important to know your move orders. Keep in mind this G4 move. Often if you can play G4 and get away with it, it's a great move. And I will see you guys in the next one. I am very happy with this game.